What's up, everybody? This is uh, Ryan Lee with Cashflow Tactics coming back again, and I've got Jimmy and Bob on the line today uh, to really go into step number two of the four-step formula. You guys want to say what's up to everyone? How you doing? Hello. All right, guys. So today we're, we're out of step number one, and in step number one, we covered all of the reasons why you will never get what you want using traditional strategies. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take the next, next step Knowing what not to do is step number one. And now we're going to explore what to do in order to get what you want financially. So our goal is to show you how you can achieve financial freedom in 10 years or less where your cash flow exceeds your expenses. So diving into step number two, the black box investing strategies of the wealthy. We've got four different things that we're going to or five different things that we're going to go through here. And the first one that we're going to talk about is why your savings will never give you what you want and why savers are ultimately losers. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever read any Robert Kiyosaki. For me, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I remember when I was trying to figure things out financially, and I'll never forget the first chapter in his book, he says savers are losers. And at first, I didn't really understand what he meant, and it kind of it, it kind of offended me a little bit because I've always been taught to save. But what he talked about in that section of his book was the rules of money have changed completely. And if you don't know what the new rules are, then you're going to lose the game. So... You guys, you guys have both read this book. What, what are your thoughts on this idea of savers or losers? I can't agree with him more. And, it, you know, it has a lot to do. You don't have to do some homework to really understand it. But it basically has to do with the bank the Fed does to uh, print money. Yeah, if you're just talking money away into, into a checking or savings account and just park it there to do anything with it, over, over time it's just going to lose value. And, and you're losing money by just having it sit around in the bank. So you actually have to put your money to work. And that's what we created the whole cash flow tactics program about is, is how to really show people how to put their money to work and within 90 days get passive income and create assets that are cash flow. You got it. Now, here's the cool thing. So we've got actually the chapter that we're talking about out of this book. It's included in this mind map here. So if you guys text 7979 or text cash flow to 797979, you'll get a copy of this mind map and you can read that very chapter. So, you know, in, in his book, he talked you know about. I don't think you could give that away, Ryan. I, if, you, if you don't, if you haven't read Rich Dad Poor Dad, half the things we're going to say aren't going to make sense. That is true. So. That is true. I would start over and read that book or listen to the audio book. I mean, you have to read the book. I mean, it was a game changer for me. Like one of those books that's like paradigm shifting and, and just like the light bulb goes off above your head and you're just like, wow, I will never look at things the same way again. Totally. Yeah, it's not like we're asking them to read monetary history of the United States to <laughs> really understand inflation. So you got it. You, you got to read this book for sure. I mean, that that is for sure. it. So don't just take the chapter, read the entire book. But here, here's the way I think about it. He talks about money as a game and around any game, there are rules to a game. Jimmy, if I remember right, you were a football player when you were young, a younger man, right? Yeah. OK, so when you went to pl practice football, you would show up at the field. Your coach would teach you and run you through drills and you knew the rules of the game. And you knew how to apply those rules within the game of football to give you the highest probability and chance of winning. But what, what if you went to the, you know, on game day after all of this practice and knowing the rules of football, if you went on game day and rather than playing football, it was basketball. Your skills wouldn't really translate, right? If you went to tackle someone, you're going to get called for a foul and your, your skills wouldn't really translate. And that's the whole issue with money is the rules around money have changed completely. So we, in order to win the game of money, we have to know what those new rules are. So we're going to dive into this. And again, you guys can get your own copy of this financial freedom formula by texting cash flow to 797979. But here, here's the first thing. And Jimmy, you're really good with this. What is money, right? What does that even mean? I mean, what should it be or what is it now? Basically, it? it's worth out, it's worthless digits and or little rectangles of government paper. You got it. Well, I mean, that's what current, yeah, that's the definition of currency. I mean, you're talking real money going back, like, to the beginning of time. Money is just a means of exchange, right? You got and it. And it's whatever people find value in. And, and that was it right there. I mean, back in the day, money held, or even today, it's supposed to hold three purposes. It's supposed to be a store of value, a unit of account, so something that you can divide and account for, and a medium of, of exchange. And it, it made... 
exchanging one with the other better. Because imagine if you're a goat farmer and you want to go exchange with a potato farmer, how many goats do you need to trade to get a, you know, a, a sack of potatoes? And so money was a common medium of exchange to be able to make business easier to do. But the problem is exactly what you mentioned, Jimmy. We've got an issue today with our money. I'm going to move our cameras out of the picture here for just a minute. But here's two $20 bills. On the right, we have a $20 bill that was pre-1971. On the left, we have a $20 bill as it's printed today. You guys know the difference. What are the difference between these two pieces of paper here? Uh, the one on the left is actually a note. It's a debt instrument, and there's nothing actually backing it. It's, it's an IOU, and the one on the right is actually backed. If you read on the bottom, I don't know if you can zoom in where people can see it says, $20 in gold coin payable to the bearer on demand. So basically, the, the one on the right is worth the equivalent of 20, 20 bucks worth of gold, and you could exchange that at that point you got time. It. But at 71, it's just a piece of paper. There's nothing backing it anymore. You got it. And that, that's where the rules of money change. You mentioned 1971. Let's, let's actually bring up a little graph here. So this right here, again, you can click on this and get your very own link here, but this takes you to what, what inflation is. And we all know what inflation is. I mean, imagine this, right? Jimmy, if I came and I gave you a $20 bill and you, you folded up that $20 bill and put it in your pocket, today you know what that $20 bill would buy you. But if you put that money in your pocket and you folded your pants and you put it in your closet and you forgot about that pants for 10 years and you pull that same pair of pants out and that same $20 bill 10 years from now, the purchasing power of that $20 bill 10 years from now is going to be completely different. And Bob, you mentioned the date of 1971. What was that? Probably be worth ten dollars ten years from now. Yeah, yeah, it'll be worth half. And Bob, you mentioned nineteen seventy one. Here's here's the graph that shows that. What happened in nineteen seventy one, and what does that have to do with our money supply? Oh, uh, we officially went off of um, was it Bretton Woods? It was yeah. wasn't at the uh, the conference. Officially went off the gold standard on a national level. On an individual basis, we had already gone off of it, but uh, we were basically using gold up until that point um, for trading on international accounts. You got it. And so now now that, that it wasn't backed by gold, you can see this line. I'm going to take our cameras out of here again. You know, If you had a $20 bill in, from 1950 to 1970, you can see that this line was basically flat, meaning savers would win the game. You could save $20 and pull it out of your savings account 20 years from now and buy the same goods and services. But in 1971, when we went off of the gold standard, you can see that this line is steadily crept up, meaning that our money gets more, less and less valuable every single year. Now, here's kind of something interesting. The government reports inflation at around 3%. The truth? Well, I mean, you can kind of take that for what it is. I'm going to give you another website here. It's called Shadow Stats. And in Shadow Stats, they report the real rate of inflation compared to the government's reported rate of inflation. It's almost twice as much as what the government reports. But all this means, coming back to the, the rules of they money change. What's that? You mean they would lie to us? No, 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 no. I wouldn't want to say it that bluntly, but yes, they would lie to us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what that really means for you is the rules of money have changed, right? And if you don't know the new rules, how can you win the game of money? And uh, So, Jimmy, tell us why are savers loser today, losers today and how does inflation impact that statement? So just what you're talking about, if you have $100 in the bank, you let it sit in the bank for a year with no interest, it's really going to be worth probably 95 or 90 the next year. Yeah. So if you put the money under your mattress, it's not going to, it's going to continue to lose value every year. You got it. You got it. So that's really what we want to show you. And guys, you know, not only are, are you being eroded by inflation, but there's other things there as well. We've included a really cool book in here written by Mark Ford. And it's the 11 secrets of wealth. And he talks all about inflation. But the bottom line is the rules of money have changed. And in order for you to win the game of personal finance, you need to know that savers are losers. You cannot only save your way to wealth. You have to play by a different set of rules. And we're going to start talking about what those rules are in the second one. You can't eat your net worth. So guys, anything you want to say in conclusion there? Well, it just it comes down to the cash flow versus accumulation mindset. Like, if your idea is you're just going to save a big pile of cash for the 40 years that you work, and then you're going to draw down on that pile of cash for the next, you know, however long you live, I just psychologically I think it's horrible. 
especially when it's very easy to find cash flowing assets or you get a pile of cash, use a little bit of leverage, and then those assets kick cash to you for the rest of your life. And you're not worried about pulling from your mountain of cash or whatever. Exactly, exactly. And speaking of leverage, this whole concept of inflation um, is going to tie back into one of the main reasons we use leverage in real estate is because we, we are counting on, on inflation. I mean, you look at the history of governments and currencies, they always inflate them. It's just, it's just a fact. So we have to, instead of you know, having this a fact, a fact, be a factor that's working against us, when we start using leverage, we can turn the tables and actually have inflation um, be working for us. So check that out in some coming videos. Um, I think this wraps it up, right, Ryan? So, I mean, if you guys like what you're seeing here, I mean, we got a great chapter from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. we got a whole book in here from Mark Ford. There's tons of value in this mind map, so you can get this completely for free. Just go to CashflowTactics.com. You got it, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll join us on the next one.